In the previous lesson, we looked at the very basics of editing an audio file. We learnt how to identify errors and make a selection, cut a selection and save the changes. In this lesson, we will look at more advanced editing. We will edit three audio files together, a voiceover and two music files. And this is referred to as multi-track editing. As I just said, we will be using three new audio files for this lesson. And I have provided sample audio files for you to use. You could, if you wish, use your own audio files, but to keep things simple at this early stage, I recommend using the audio files provided here. Download the multi-track exercise files. Remember to make copies of these downloaded files before editing. So let me explain a little bit more about multi-track editing. I've opened an example of a multi-track project. It's actually the finished version of what we will create in this lesson. Let's listen to the project first to see what we have. These are the rules of being human. First, you will receive a body. You may like it or hate it, but it will be yours for as long as you live. How you take care of it, or fail to take care of it, can make an enormous difference in the quality of your life. You will learn lessons. You are enthralled in a full-time informal school called LIFE. Each day you will be presented with opportunities to learn what you need to know. The lessons presented are often completely different from those you think you need. As you can see, there are three tracks and each track has its own settings and controls. We import each audio file onto a separate track and that allows us to make changes to each audio file independently to the others. But as we play the audio files, they play or mix together. In this way, we can add a music track to a voiceover or sounds to an interview and much, much more. So let's get started by opening Audacity. To open more than one audio file in Audacity, we have to import the files by going to the File Import menu. In other audio editors, you may only need to go to the Open menu. Select and import three audio files for this lesson. Each audio file should open on its own track. Take a few moments to listen to the audio files and use the mute or solo buttons on the tracks to listen to each individually. I find it much easier to work with multiple audio tracks if I can sort the order in a logical way. In this lesson, I would like the poem to be at the top with the strings track second and the bright track third. To change the order of the tracks, Click on the pop-down menu for each track and select either Move Up or Move Down.
What we are going to do is split the poem into smaller sections and then assemble the sections, adding longer pauses between them. The first half of the poem will play over the strings music and the second half of the poem will play over the bright music. We will use the selection tool to place the cursor into position, the time shift tool to move the selections on the track and the envelope tool to fade the music at the beginning or end. Let's start by splitting the poem track into smaller sections. First, make sure the selection tool is active. Then press the solo button on the poem track so we don't hear the other tracks as we play. Press play and listen for the pauses between or at the end of the sentences. These are the rules of being human. First, you will receive a body. When you have found a pause, click at that position with the selection tool. You may need to zoom in a little to be sure of the positioning. Then go to the edit menu and choose split. The audio file is now split into two and can be moved independently. Now change the tool to the time shift tool. Click and drag the second section a little to the right, creating a larger space between the two parts. Continue this process, splitting and moving the rest of the poem. You should be able to create seven smaller sections or clips, the first being the intro clip, and then two sets of three clips. I've positioned mine so the intro clip is at the very start. Then the first set of three clips follow, with a gap between the next set of three clips. We are now going to position the music under each set of clips. Make sure none of the tracks are in solo or mute so we can hear all of the audio tracks when we play. With the time shift tool selected, drag to move the strings music under the first section, so it starts just after the intro clip. Then move the bright music under the second section, so it starts just before the fifth clip. Let's play and listen to what it sounds like. Well, mine sounds OK, but there are a couple of issues. Firstly, the spaces are too long. I'm not going to spend any more time now adjusting the spaces, because that could take a bit too much time. And we already know how to do this. So I'll, I'll leave that for you to do in your own time. The other issue, though, is that the music overlaps during the second section. We'll spend a bit of time to fix that now. Firstly, let's select the Envelope tool. This tool will allow us to alter the volume of the track over time, creating fades in or out. I'm going to create a fade out after the first section of clips so that the music tracks do not overlap. With the Envelope tool selected, click at the top edge of the Strings Music track just after the fourth clip you should notice four white dots appear on the track. These dots are points that can be dragged up or down, left or right, with the effect of reducing or increasing the volume at that point. With one set of points, the volume changes across the whole of the track. But if we add a second set of points at the end of the audio, then we are able to change the volume between these two points. So I'm going to click again with the envelope tool, but this time at the very end of the audio. Four white dots appear. Drag the points you have just created at the end of the audio. Dragging to the centre reduces the volume 
and dragging to the left makes the fade out occur quicker. I'm going to fade this music out at the point where the bright music starts. If we need to adjust the fade, simply drag those points until you're completely happy. We are almost at the end of this lesson. To finish off with, I must explain how we can save our work, of which there are two ways. During this lesson, we have been working with audio on different tracks. The advantage of working on different tracks is that each track can be adjusted independently. If we want to work on this multi-track again, we must save it as a project, which preserves the tracks as they are. To save as a project, go to the File menu and select Save Project. If you have finished working on the project and you want to publish your work to a website, for instance, the work must be mixed together and saved as an audio file, such as a WAV or MP3. To mix the tracks together, we must first select all of the tracks. To select all the tracks, go to the Edit menu, Select and All. Then go to the Tracks menu and Render and mix. The three tracks now become one and if we play we can hear the voice and music together but we can't edit them independently anymore. Finally this mixed down version must be saved as an audio file. To save as an audio file go to the file menu and select export Choose a file type such as WAV PCM or MP3. The file can now be published online or played on other audio players. That's the end of this lesson. In this lesson we looked at how to work with more than one audio file on multiple tracks splitting an audio file into smaller clips, moving clips and saving as a project and an audio file. Carry on editing the multi-track project. Then export the audio file either as a WAV PCM file or MP3 file. In the next lesson we will look at a couple of ways that could help you improve the quality of your audio. Go to the next lesson to start learning how to improve the quality of your audio recording.